Okay, welcome my Branson Solar fans, and this is the, uh, I guess the wrap on my uh, EV project. You can see my plug, I've got the other one pulled out. I've got the uh, side panels on. Basically, uh, I had to cut on the inside up under here. That actually is pushed out just slightly. But I uh, basically had to cut some clearance so I can get that back on there and I just tie wrap that and I actually use bolts and clips and all that, but whatever. <clears throat> kind of tore up some of those plastic ones so I can see I want the bolts here, so I just got some little spring clips. And uh, both sides work just fine. So it really doesn't look uh, all that much different than it did. Uh, originally uh, had a little issue with these these are cracked and whatever so I put a washer there to help hold that on there at any rate so and then I got my lights on here like I showed you oh and the problem with the rear and there you go <coughs> you can see that I had to loosen those because when you get it all the way back if it's straight, then it hits the tire. So I have to leave those loose, but uh, I'm actually gonna reposition them. So anyway, here's my solar cord. Now what we'll do, what? Okay. So what we'll do, we'll take the cord. There you go. Now, once you plug that in, This goes around to a uh, Flexmax charge controller. And you can see what it does. It powers up the, I don't know how well you can actually see that, but uh, we'll take a closer look if we can. Should have got uh, pretty good. So I got an out, out back Flex Max 80 on the wall. There's a, a breaker in there. You have to have a breaker on. And then I've got it wired over to a transfer switch that's DC. And the transfer switch pulls its power from this Flex Max on the right hand side. Now, this Flex Max feeds a different type of battery, so it's got a different program in it. So what I did, there's the solar input, comes in to this side, this E-panel, that's an E-panel behind there. Comes into the E-panel, comes over to here, and then it goes into the switch. Now, when I flick the switch one way, it's charging the Aquion battery. When I flick it the other way, it charges the EV. So I simply switch it, takes the power off of this one, and takes the solar power, and it runs it over to that one. And then that one starts charging the batteries in the EV. You could do the same thing with a car or anything else if you had uh, a charge controller. And of course, we're doing lead acid over here in the EV, but still, even if this was a, a some other type of battery, lithium ion, whatever it was, if you had a charge controller that would charge it, this is uh, stealing your solar panels is a much better way, you're DC charging. so. Now your power goes out and it goes over and charges the EV. Now, if that batteries were uh, empty, then maybe in, I don't know, I haven't, this is the first, actually the first time I charged it, so I don't really know how long it would take, but I was using those batteries before on my solar system, so I repurposed the batteries. So, technically, looking at what they used to do before, I would say a couple hours, they're fully charged. So, and I was charging them off three and a half uh, kilowatts of panels. So, whatever. Maybe it'll be about the same. It should be. Let's just see if we can zoom in here and see what it says now. Hopefully that. Uh, can't see it from this distance, but hopefully it'll show up good. At that angle, it looks like it's looks like it's good. So it shows you what it's doing, bolt charging, blah blah blah. 
and it will continue to charge the batteries until they're full and then it says charged. But uh, here, the thing is, if you go to a level two, which I've got a plug for a level two as well, the thing is, if you do level two, then you're uh, basically charging your home battery and then you're using your home battery uh, off these inverters to give you 220 and then you're running 220 over to a level 2 charger and charging your EV with 220 which is taking the 220 and turning it back to DC so you're going DC from your panels to AC in your inverter back to to a charger and then back to DC to charge the battery in your EV <clears throat> so you're not putting 220 into your batteries obviously but you're just providing 220 to the charge uh, controller which is built into your EV now what you have on the wall and I've got a little picture of one you have basically a smart it's not a, a charge controller uh, a level 2 charger and that has a picture of uh, one that I might use it doesn't really matter there's a number of different ones and there's the plug for it so it's just a smart uh, connection intelligent connection from tells your EV how much power is available and things like that what kind of connection you have uh, whether you got a you know level 2 it could be a, a 20 amp it could be a 30 amp it could be a 60 amp it could be a lot of things and then you have a uh, high voltage uh, DC up to uh, maybe I don't know 400 volts DC I'm not sure what they use on the highest I haven't really looked at the chargers like for a uh, supercharger for a Tesla or some other car I'm not really sure at what voltage DC they might use but uh, probably at least 400 maybe 600 volts DC and then they're charging the uh, batteries like the uh, I think the batteries in a Tesla for example are about uh, 350 to 450 volts DC as I recall I was read at one time but uh, I think that's what it was 350 to 450 and another car could be completely different I mean the quant uh, uses a uh, it's an electric vehicle made in Switzerland if you look it up uh, Q A N T uh, nano flow cell I think is the uh, website nano n a n o flow cell or yeah I think it's nano flow cell uh, dot com probably <laughs> and you can find the uh, information on that that's actually a 48 volt battery in the quant so at any rate uh, it could be a lot of things uh, depending on the EV you could have different uh, DC voltages and all that but generally they're making you use uh, 220 AC and then going through a charge controller so that black cord pl would plug in for example to your uh, outlet which could be a 30 40 or 60 amp outlet or whatever mine's a 30 and then you plug your uh, connector into your car and you charge it up and then the uh, basically that's just an intelligent uh, controller there that tells it uh, you know what kind of power you've got available and that kind of thing that's all it really does it doesn't actually charge the battery so at any rate that's the uh, end of my uh, project here for this and I hope you got something out of that so it's really not that difficult uh, to change over your batteries possibly uh, you could use a different kind of battery and by the way here's the original sitting here so there's what was in it originally I don't know if I'm going to use this for anything they're pretty low <coughs> at any rate so uh, the uh, obviously our amp hours on, the on these batteries about twice what I have which doesn't seem to cause any problems I've uh, been around around the yard a few times and uh, no issues at all it doesn't really perform any better or anything in fact it's a little better in some sense at least for me because it actually sits just slightly lower it's got more uh, weight lower down about three inches lower these batteries are than the other ones and more weight higher up because they're taller but uh, actually handles a little bit better than it used to with the extra weight I've got a little bit more uh, negative camber on the wheels and it's actually a little better so I'm uh, satisfied it was uh, not a whole lot of work but uh, the welding was the biggest part getting the rest of it together wasn't that bad so maybe I'll do something later on and comment uh, when I do another maintenance video on it we're about a hundred and almost 190 hours on it at the moment so maybe I'll do another maintenance video on it later on when I do something else 
and uh, comment on the charging. So thanks for watching. And uh, if you know anybody that's interested in having an electric vehicle for, uh, you know, this is great for end time transportation. You could just pull it in, charge it up. Depending on the mileage, uh, since we don't really know mileage, we only know hours, it's gonna be, uh, take me a little more effort to, to take it somewhere where I can mark out uh, like a little track that's a half mile long or whatever I can find out here and go back and forth and back and forth until it quits and then I'll know how many miles uh, that I can get. But you know, the batteries are three years old that I put in so it really does still doesn't tell you what new batteries would do necessarily. But uh, I think they're in pretty good shape so I don't think there's a big issue there. So maybe I'll do something like that in the future. So thanks for watching. So please subscribe and send this to other people that are interested.